Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. Um, bits and pieces of all sorts today, Sunday chat. Um, <laughs> ideas for the Sunday chats that are not going to be done. So I'm going to do an update on my phalaenopsis that are growing on the kitchen windowsill. And I thought, no, that makes a separate video. That's a video in its own right, so we're not doing that today. I thought we'd have a look at Derek's plants and last time we looked at them that's all we did we just looked at them and I thought it might be an idea to look at them and try and read the names on the labels or put pop-ups for the names of the plants from the laptop that's a separate video <laughs> all these little ideas to include in the Sunday chat if they make a separate video that's it's you know it extends the videos through the week um, even though the thoughts went into it today. Um, <clears throat> right, news? There isn't any. <laughs> That's that bit done. Um, subscribers, thanks for those that have. Big thanks for those that are about to. So if you haven't, it would be nice. Thumbs up and all that sort of stuff. Thanks to the um, patrons for hanging in there. You, you will just have... Um, <laughs> made your monthly contribution and thanks for that it, it is really appreciated those that are hanging in there in hard times we've all got hard times at the moment however Muggins here is making some purchases only little ones um, selling the guitar that's been on eBay a while the only interest I've had was this morning Somebody from Belfast wants me to post it to them. I'm not posting that. If I still had all the original packaging, I'd consider it. But it would have to be heavily insured and it would cost quite a bit. And that would have to be added on. I don't see why I should be paying for that. I've put it in as collection only or local delivery possibly. But the thing is, if I locally deliver it, I'm not going to be able to do a demo, am I? If, if somebody comes around to collect it here, I can plug it in and show that it all worked and turn the knobs and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, so that doesn't seem to be going to sell, quite honestly. So I put on hold the new guitar, my treat. Um, I would like to sell the old one first. I don't want to, that's the thing. I don't want to, you know, it's a small room where they're going to go anyway, the music room. Um, yeah, so there's that. That's not going very well, but um, it's still got a day or so to go. Um, there's only one person watching it, you know what eBay's like, and I suspect that's the guy from Belfast who wanted me to post it. So, uh, you know, so that, it may not sell. Um, we shall see. Also, in addition to that, I've put bids on two Japanese larch. Now, I had a lovely Japanese larch. Bonsai was, I'm sorry, I've switched to bonsai now, once upon a time. It had a lovely structure, it was a lovely shape, it was a, actually a very nice tree. Not a big tree, but it was a very nice tree. And it lost three branches, three branches in the middle. So it, it had a, a lollipop on the top and a couple of branches at the bottom. So as a bonsai it was useless. Um, and I lost it, basically. So I put bids on two Japanese larch on eBay. Now they're, they're relatively young trees, but they're not twigs in pots. And somebody's already pre-wired them um, into a basic shape, which I may well take the wire off and unwire them and unbend them, because I'm not necessarily happy on this twisty-turny thing that people do. It's not how trees grow. <laughs> well, certainly larch don't, anyway. They tend to go straight up. Um, yeah, so I, I won't know whether I win those bids until later today. I think they've got about four hours to go, so I will know today. Um, they're not expensive. You know, normally when you're buying what somebody's calling a bonsai, in other words, work has been done on it and it's not a twig in a pot, you start paying quite a lot of money and I'm not spending lots of money on trees. Not when I can collect quite a few in the wild anyway. So that's that side of life. I spent three and a half hours yesterday messing with the internet. It just kept dropping out. I couldn't work out what was going wrong. 
it felt, the, the laptop felt like something was running that I had no control over and was using all the memory, um, which on that would be very difficult. <laughs> Um, and I just couldn't work it out. You know, you, tr you try closing everything down, you try rebooting it, check for Windows updates, which can often grind it to a halt. I tried turning the router on and off to uh, check the internet speed, that was up to speed. Everything seemed fine, but it just wouldn't go. And the internet kept dropping out. And I wanted to watch the flipping tennis and um, <laughs> some good matches on. Well, one of them you wouldn't call a match, it was an argument, but um, with some tennis in between, but uh, <laughs> fun and games. Excitable little people. Um, but yeah, the, the internet problem. And in the end, I went on the internet to find out if there were any particular problems with my internet provider in my area. So they provide a website for that. Think it through. <laughs> You've got a problem with your internet and they provide a website to find out if you've got a problem with your internet. Duh. <laughs> Duh. Anyway, I couldn't find anything like that. And in the end, I, I, I started looking up queries about the router itself. And um, I just came across a, a, a bland little statement that said, you know, to, um, to reset your router, turn it off at the mains. Now, I'd been turning it off on the router, which leaves the power pack connected. Apparently, there's a difference. So if you want to reset the router and reconnect it back to your internet supplier, you unplug it completely, and then you're supposed to wait for an amount of time and then plug it back in. So I actually did that, and everything was fine. So the problem was the router and, and it talking to the internet service provider so I, I thought I was going to have to wait to get another router and then you're waiting for days without the internet aren't you so no posting videos or anything like that anyway so that got sorted um, much to my annoyance I don't like things like that when I can't solve them but I did eventually solve them after a lot of messing around the other thing I bought it was a suggestion from somebody actually on the bonsai channel well several people have suggested it but one person suggested it a bit more specifically. I've ordered a backdrop. Now, it's only a cloth at the end of the day, but it's been made as a backdrop. So it's got nice stitched edges. And the most important thing is it's got a, what would you call it? it the top has been turned over and stitched. So it's got like a hollow bit along the top, which you can put a bar through, which means you can then hang it and do that with it along the bar, like a curtain, maybe. I haven't decided on that yet. Um, but with a bar through it, um, I've got these, I can't get one down now because they're in use, but I've got these little metal S hooks, which go over the top of the conservatory structure, uh, like over here where this hanging rack is. And, um, it's five foot wide by seven foot long. Now that sounds much too big. Five foot wide takes me from the corner to about here. So that completely excludes both of those windows, completely blacks those out. And being seven foot long, it can tuck down behind my workbench and hang over. So that, that gives me, in one piece of material, everything that I want. So uh, I'll be fixing that up once that arrives. And I inadvertently, I, I, it, I, it came off Amazon. Um, you know, I just did a quick search sort of thing. You know, and um, I, I clicked on one of the things and it took me to the page on Amazon. And it was very cheap and I thought, yeah, come on, let's get that. And, you know, get this backdrop thing sorted out properly. Because I appreciate, certainly with the bonsai, when I'm working on trees, you can't really see what the hell I'm doing when the view goes out into the garden, plus it's distracting. So uh, yeah, I went on to Amazon and I inadvertently ordered it and um, <laughs> got myself Amazon Prime by mistake. Um, basically it said the postage was 
free and when I got there it was only free if you accepted their trial offer of Prime and I thought well it's a trial offer it's going to cost me nothing I've made my mind up <laughs> I will not be paying at the end of the period I'll be cancelling um, but in the meantime providing the internet's working okay the TV's a smart TV I can get Prime on the TV and there's a shed load of films so I'll be watching a film virtually every day for the next 20 days or so um, up to the point where I can cancel it it's it's not an extortionate amount to pay each month but I did it once before two or three years ago and you go through the films and you know I'm out of 300 films, there's only a dozen you actually want to watch and the rest are just, you don't, not interested. So I wouldn't be paying that for the films, I'm already paying for Netflix and I've nearly run out of films on there as well. Um, but you get free postage and, you know, everything, which is good if you buy a lot of stuff. Well, I don't buy a lot of stuff, so I don't need the Prime um, access to Amazon so I'll be cancelling that but I get this you know the, the, the um, postage and packing for this was 4 a fiver well I've saved a fiver and it's cost me nothing and I get to watch a load of films um, on the TV you know so you know decent quality and everything so so that'd be good so that's all the sort of news and stuff that's going on internet hassles uh, yeah, I think that was all. Um, now, what's I actually going to do today now? I put two things off. Derek's plants and my phalaenopsis. I know what I was going to do. I'm going to have a look at the cattleyas. Um, now, every time I look at the cattleyas, we look at the holy clay pots. What we don't look at is the mounted cattleyas. Or I'll say cattleya types because a fair few of them are more brassavola than uh, Catlia, quite honestly, um, and crosses within that arena. Um, yeah, uh, we, we, you know, we, we don't look at the mounts very often. The only time we look at the mounts is if they're in the project orchids or they come into bloom or spike. Otherwise, they just sit there on the rack and we never look at them. Um, I mean, two of my three Orengus are, are in spike at the moment. And we have looked at those spikes, but they're not in bloom yet. So none of my um, telumnias are in spike at the moment. So they're just they're just busy growing. Um, so I thought, yeah, we'll pick on the cattleya types and um, just pick them up and have a quick look. But I'm going to move the camera because it's in the way at the moment. So we'll just uh, move that over there somewhere. Point it different view. Now, often when I do this and I hold plants up to the camera, the camera's in the doorway. And I've noticed that as I approach the camera, the plant's in the dark. So, although it's not going to be the best view, we're going to do it the other way around today. And the camera is going up here. I bet that made you seasick. So now I'm facing the light. And when I hold the plants up, they're lit up. Yeah? I haven't done that before. Right, now I'm not going to necessarily know the names of these, but you know me. Um, they're all in my notes with their name, but without tags, I don't know which one's which. So this is a Brassavola type. Um, and this one has been doing nothing for a very long time. There's no sign of spikes or anything coming, but we've now got root activity and we've got a new growth there this is a new growth out here and there's another one in there and this is a very poor new growth but it did provide some roots so this one's sort of trying after doing nothing for a long time so it's, it's coming back into growth it's also got some scale around the base I'll get at them it's only a few but I do need to get at them. They get round the base on cattleyas. They are the bane of one's life if one has cattleyas. Anyway, new growths, some root growth, and starting back into growth. That one, whatever it is. But it's, uh, as I say, it's more brassavola than anything. Um, 
There aren't any more around this side. Nope. Right, so I'll come down here. And we start up here with my little cernua. <laughs> this is amusing, this is, because this is doing absolutely nothing, and that's exactly what it's supposed to do. These bloom um, December time. Um, they're not long-lived blooms, um, but so, you know, come towards the end of January, you finish with all your blooms. And then this does nothing for a long time, like six months plus. No new growths, no new roots, absolutely nothing. So when I'm going around spraying the mounts, this one gets missed out quite often because it's not growing. This will come back into growth later in the summer and the first signs will be some root activity, then the new growths, and the new growths will be where the blooms will be. It doesn't bloom on old growths. So that's just sitting there quietly doing nothing, which is exactly what it's supposed to do. Next to that is a... Oh, we've got one with a name now. Ah, right, this is SLC Seagulls Raindrop, crossed with Catlatonia Why Not? And this has been sitting there doing nothing for a long time, and it still is. It does have root activity. There are root tips, green root tips, and these are new roots on the latest growth. But what this, ah, oh, and there's, there's a little eye down the base of that growth that's going to move. So this is going to come back into growth, preceded by root growth, followed by new growth on that one. So that's coming on. But at least it's doing something, or trying to do something. Next to that, oh, another Brassavola type. Well, it looks like it anyway. Now, one of these Brassavola types isn't. It's BC Make. I don't know which one it is. <laughs> I've got a flipping clothes. So it's covered in spider's webs, this one. Now, this one, again, has been sitting doing nothing for some time. What we've got now is a little new growth there and two new growths here. So we now have new growths. And this one is doing new growths without any sign of new roots yet. But it's coming, again, it's coming back into growth. This has been doing nothing for a, a long time. Um, it's a, well, I say it's a blooming sized plant. It might not be, it could be a blooming sized division. Um, if you see what I mean. If you've got a blooming sized plant and you cut it into four, those, those divisions are not necessarily blooming size. It's a bit of a con that some of the sellers do. The way to guarantee it's blooming size is to buy it in bloom, of course. <laughs> not always possible. Right, and this one has a name. This is Catlia Little Lemon Drops crossed with Catlatonia, why not? So that's two hybrids I've got with the same one in it. Now this used to be in a pot and it started to fail miserably. So I put it on a mount and it sat there and did nothing and has been doing nothing for a long time. And this has got a mass of scale on that base of that. I'm going to spray that. Quite bad that one. Where are all these spider's webs are coming from? Better not be flipping whatnots. Uh, spider mites. No, I think uh, if you've got spider mites that are bad enough to actually produce the webbing, then you've got them bad. And if you've got them that bad, you can see the flipping things. Anyway, the base of this one needs a, needs a good going over. Needs a good spray. But no real sign of life on this at the moment. But there is root activity. Ah, yes there is. There's a new growth up the top. Now, I, I didn't know that was there. I've only just spotted that. So we do have a new growth up that side of the plant. We ought to have one down this side as well, but not yet. Um, all right, let's, you know what I always say with bugs? If you're going to deal with them, deal with them. So let's deal with them. And I've done with the little blighters. That won't get them all. It'll, do, it'll need doing again. And while I'm at it, I'm going to cut that off because although it's it's rock hard and it's not rotten, it will be. 
and it might just get into the rest of the plant. So we'll take that off. It also improves the look of it. So we do have a new growth on there and I need to keep my eye on the scale. On that one, next to that one is a bigger one. Now this one, round the old place, um, got put on a mount and it got put, you know, my racks used to be quite high up, like hanging actually from the roof. And that got put on the rack and it had its back to the bright light. But the one that was the other side of it got moved and that left this exposed to the bright light and it was too close to the roof and it caught those two leaves. This wasn't there then, this was the high spot on the plant. And it, serious sunburn. And that happened in a very, very short space of time. Very short space of time. And um, what have we got going on here then? Well, what we got going on here, at long last, is a nice, strong new growth. Yeah? So we do have activity on this one. Uh, that's good activity as well. That's a nice, strong new growth there. Spider's webs. <laughs> and then this one's got some scale as well, not a huge amount, but a few little. A few on the leaves, any on the base? Mm, not really. Anyway, new ro uh, some root activity on the old root. So an old root here that's branched out. Again, an old root here that's branched out and continued with growing. So there's a little bit of um, root activity going on and a nice new growth that should again push new roots out. Oh, next one. This one's doing absolutely nothing. It's... <laughs> See, I should get these down. I've been using the sprayer a lot. So there's me saying that this one's done absolutely nothing and yet another one that's got a new growth that I didn't know was there. Now this has done nothing for a very long time and um, I'll turn it round. Boy, did it catch the sun. <laughs> that was the problem in the other place. It, it, you know, there, there were places where plants were okay for a couple of months and then suddenly they weren't. And it was difficult to keep tabs on the fact that the sun had changed its position and they weren't where they were before. So, you know, that's how things like that happen. Anyway, this has got virtually no roots. It's now got a very weak new growth, which may actually pull that plant back. It may not. It may not. We shall see. Right, what else have we got coming along here? Uh, there's another Brassavola type. Um, this one's taking off at the moment, so this is one of my Brassavola types that really is growing. Got a big, big new growth coming up the back here. It's funny actually, the new growths on this one, um, they're a totally different colour. So they almost look like something's wrong, <laughs> but that's, that's how they grow. So there's um, one up the back, massive new roots coming out with this growth here. So this one's coming back to life. In, uh, in a big way. I mean, that's a good set of roots coming on this growth. Highly likely that it will bloom on that growth and then we can find out what it is. <laughs> Which one it is, is what I mean. As I said, they're all documented, but without tags on them, I don't know which one's which. So it all look like insane. Anyway, this, this, one's, this one's doing okay. This, this, this one um, will bloom, I suspect, on one or both of those new growths. I've got a feeling that's a new growth as well. Not sure. Anyway, two good ones, and that's the important bit. A, a lovely burst of roots on that one. That's that one. Oh, no. Nope, 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 nope. Nothing else on there. What have we got on here? What we've got on here is this one. This is a Lalia. Well, it's a Lalia cross, basically. And as Michael McCarthy's advice again, um, he said that this, both of the parents that have gone into this 
come from seasonally dry areas. So they would grow in the wet season, not in the dry season. And um, I said that last year several of the new growths rotted and all of the bloom spikes failed. So this was a miserable failure last year. And um, apparently it needs to be kept dry when it's not growing because it comes from an area where it would get hardly any rain at all. So what I'm doing now is I'm, when I water this, I'm just spraying these roots and I'm not getting the plant and the moss wet at all. And um, it may work. We've got two new growths here, one each side there, and some new roots. And I've only just noticed, but right down the bottom here, coming out from underneath the plant is another new growth. Now that's the one that could obviously get quite wet. So far, those are the only new growths. There could be more. Um, I mean, you know, in the future, not now, otherwise I'd see them. But um, what really needs to happen with this is this moss that's around the base of the plant ought to just come off. Just peel it off and stop it holding that moisture around the base of those um, pseudo bulbs because it doesn't need to be that wet and if any new growths come up in that area where that moss is obviously you know they're in the moss so that's not how it should be growing so I'll just pull the load of that off so there's a bare patch there now don't mind the moss for the roots when they're actively growing so that one's been staying wet too long when it wasn't in growth uh, even though it was on a mount, it was quite heavy on the moss. Live moss, but you know, nonetheless. Right, what are we doing now then? Dendrobiums, oncidium types, thing. No, I'm not going to class that as a cat yet. <laughs> and then round here, have we got any round here? I don't think we have, I think that was it. Yeah. Yeah, that was it. So, catlias that are not in holy clay pots, that was, i.e. the mounted catlia types. Not catlias as such, although a couple of them were um, catlia types. Um, catlias are scale magnets, and I have scale in here. I don't have infestations on any individual plant. I have some few more on some plants than others and I have a I'd say a good percentage of my plants that have none so it's not like the whole place is covered in the flipping things um, but they aim at the catlias catlias are worst and second worst black hair type dendrobiums those two that's where they head basically that's that's where they, oh I was going to do the renanthras as well well, because basically I watered them today. Now, since they got put in this setup, which is chunky bark and some moss, they've started to grow. Um, we do have root activity. There's a nice big fat root that's come out the side of the pot. That would have been better if it went down. And the other side of the plant, there's another one that is going down in the pot. So that one has, this one had virtually no roots. This was the one we, um, we stood it in moss because it lost its roots and it just had one big long root sticking out of the moss. The idea was to get some new ones to grow. Well, they are. So that one's coming on. Caught the sun, that one. <laughs> this one that was in the same amount of light didn't react to the sun. This is the, it's a smaller type of Renanthera. On the grounds, I don't believe it's that young a plant, it's just a smaller version, this particular one. And again, we've got new roots coming out on the leaf joints here. We've got a massive root, up, root activity on this old root that's just suddenly burst into life, and also around the side here. So we've now got roots growing on this one as well. And both this one and the previous one are both growing a new leaf. So growth all round there. And then the bigger one, this is the biggest one by far, size-wise I mean. That doesn't mean to say it's necessarily blooming size, but it's the biggest one I've got. 
and this is growing new roots out of all the leaf joints. So starting down here, that's just below the bottom leaf, that root, yeah? Um, this root's come out and gone back in again, that's good. <laughs> and then coming up there, we've got one here, one here, one here, around the other side of the plant, one here, one here, and one there. So this has now got a mass of new roots. Unfortunately, a fair few of them are going to be aerial, but there's also some root activity on some of the older roots. And again, this one has a new leaf at the top. So uh, the Renantherus, Renantherus, whatever you want to say, however you want to say it, Renantherus, I think is correct-ish, <laughs> are all now growing reasonably well. If you see what I mean, they're all doing something that's visible. So I'm trying to put that back. And quite honestly, these need their position changed because of the plants that are near them. Then they're not touching anything. <clears throat> you can place your plants without them touching the one next to it. Then if you do get any bugs, you've reduced the risk of transferring them across the plants. Yeah, simples. <laughs> Which is worth doing. If you've got the room, then, you know, put your plants back so that they don't touch anything. Which is what I'm trying to do up here. That's better. That's better. -er. Right. Um, I'll take the camera off so that I'm handheld again. And we'll just have a quick look at uh, a few other things. So, let's uh, put this clip. And there we go. It's funny, that just feels so right. <laughs> uh, it's probably because I've been doing it years. Right, up the back here, this is a nobly type um, that was misnamed. This, this was, um, apparently it was um, Oriental Smile Fantasy. Well, it wasn't. <laughs> Nothing like it. But whatever it is, it's about to bloom again. So um, some nice big buds there coming soon. So that will be back in bloom again soon. That's already bloomed once this year. Now it's having another go. Um, the uh, fall over the vander bucket. This is the radiata. Now that's going to be a good spike this time. If you look at the number of buds, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven or eight buds on there. So that's going to be a good spike on top of what is the best bulb. So this latest growth that, that I've, I've pushed on is actually bigger than anything else and is producing a good spike. Um, this plant's doing okay now. I mean, around the other side of the plant, um, we've got a nice new growth with loads of root activity there. And around this side of the plant on the growth that's about to bloom, it's got two new growths again with root activity. So this is still in the same pot that, um, that I got it in. And this is one of Derek's plants. Um, I'll wait till I do the separate video looking at Derek's plants, but um, there are enough new people around that I probably need to explain Derek's plants. Otherwise it's a pointless expression, isn't it? So, uh, right, there's nothing much else going on down here. I'm sure there was something else on this shelf. Oh well, perhaps not. Um, over on the Miltonia front, um, this Miltonia here has a spike on every new shoot. Every new shoot has a spike. Every single one. So that's going to be a rather good show because there are a rather a lot of new growths. So hang on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on that one, and they're all going to bloom. The one behind it, I do believe is starting spikes as well. Uh, perhaps has not had far advanced. I'm sure I saw one. Yeah. There's one. <laughs> so this one's coming into spike as well. 
The other big Miltonia won't because I'll stop it if it does because that's it's been repotted. That's four individual little plants there um, to grow on. So the, the, it's the next set of new growth that will be allowed to bloom, not that one. Um, that was that. This spike over here is pushing on quite nicely now. Now that thing's got a name that's a, a it's a long name and I can't remember it. <laughs> it's Memoria something like Donald Yazoo or Yanza or something like that. But that's a nice spike coming on. Um, blooms are odont type. Um, so that's that coming on. Um, yeah, I don't think there was anything else. There's certainly no spikes on the um, this lot up here, the holy clay pots. But I've just watered those. And I think I can say across the board, apart from one, every single one of them has a new growth. At least one. My Lelia Anceps has three. So potentially three spikes on that this time round. That'll be good. <laughs> Um, this is all, these are Derek's plants down here and um, well if I just get one of the tags out you'll, you'll sort of see what I'm getting at why you need to look at the names sometimes because some of these are just so rare this tag doesn't want to come out yeah, well, what you want and what you're going to do are two different things you're coming out whether you like it or not it's lifting the whole plant out that's because the roots are attached Right, that is a Wilsonara Tiger Brew Yellow. So some of these do have proper names. Now Wilsonara, that will be heavy on the Odontoglossum type. But I'll wait till we go over all of them because some of these are just very, very rare plants. Very rare. Some of them aren't, you know. Some of them are mundane, but... Unfortunately, most of the incredibly rare ones are the ones that aren't doing too well, like this one. That's an Odontoda Lutix cross with McBean's Aster. Uh, go on the internet and try and find that. Because <laughs> you won't. And that's doing appallingly badly. But, uh, maybe it'll survive. So... Yeah, we'll have a look at those in a bit more detail with their names this time. Those that have got names, a couple haven't got tags, but most have. So, uh, so there we go. And that'll do for today. A bit bitty, but um, as I say, it's uh, that's how it goes. Oh, and we've got this to look forward to very, very soon. Those are going to open in the next day or two. And that is um, Dendrobium harveyanum. I owned one of these for a long time. And I think it's the first plant that I can safely say actually bloomed itself to death. Because it was in bloom constantly. Spike after spike after spike. Often two or more at the same time. For about nine months. And then it just keeled over. So I lost it. This one will not be allowed to do that. <laughs> um, but yes, we've got those blooms to come. Gorgeous golden yellow and frilly. Yellow and frilly this time round. Right. Uh, I don't think there was anything else coming into spike. Um, this Mazda Valia that hasn't bloomed for ages that I said is now going to bloom and add a nice big fat bud on there. Well, some clumsy clod knocked it off with the sprayer. That's the trouble with that long nozzle. You tend to look at the end of it to see what you're actually spraying and where the water's going. And it's quite easy to bash things on the way, especially things like canes sticking up. So I actually knocked the bud off of there, I broke it. But there is another one coming, but I think that one's blasted. Yeah, I think it has. So we'll have to wait for some more. But, um, you know, that's life and all that. <laughs> uh, and, um, yeah, leave it at that for today. The um, big zygo at the back there has got um, new growths coming now. Whether any of those will bloom or not, I don't know. 
I think that one's the Louisendorf, I'm not sure, can't remember. But, um, anyway, yeah. I'm pretty sure that Oncidium type there with the yellowing leaves on the old bulbs, I'm pretty sure that one's got a spike tucked in one of those new growths somewhere. But uh, we will know eventually, won't we? You know, we wait long enough. And this, out of the repots that we went through, most of them have now been put on hold, except for this one. This one needs to come off of this mount. I'd like to wait for new growths, but... Um, I mean, there are signs of new roots in places, um, that's good enough. Um, and I'll just, I'll mount that on some cork bark without too much moss, and then it won't matter. But we need to get that one done. I don't want that going into the winter like that. Probably wouldn't do it any harm, but I just don't want that to happen. So, uh, right, and... Um, I will see you next time. Um, a lot of people may have been expecting the answers to the Q's and A's video. Um, they I'm going to do as a separate video confined to just that. Um, last time we did the answers as part of the Sunday chat and we ended up with a, I think it was about a 55 minute video. <laughs> I don't know how long this one is. Probably too long knowing me. <laughs> so I'll do that as a separate video as well. So we've got the Derek's plants, we've got my um, kitchen indoor phalaenopsis, update on those, and we've got the Q's and A's. We will have everything in bloom on the 8th coming soon, and also there will be another Project Orchids video for group, um, group 2 in update 2. If you have a look at the views of the last Project Orchid video I did, they're low. So this may be the last year that we do the Project Orchids because they just don't get the views. Loads of people that leave comments on them obviously enjoy them, but there's not enough people watching them, if you see what I mean. Especially as they're a set, you know, they progress all through the year. So uh, uh, we might do something completely different next year. We'll see. Anyway, thanks for dropping by and I'll see you next time. <laughs>